Meanwhile, United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon has called on the UN Security Council to impose an immediate arms embargo on South Sudan. The council is meeting today to discuss its mission in the country as the latest violence threatens the implementation of last year's peace deal. CCTV's William Densler reports from the UN headquarters in New York. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon met Tuesday with members of the United Nations Security Council just a day after he urged them to help reinforce UN action in South Sudan. Now on Monday, the Secretary General condemned the killing of two Chinese peacekeepers as well as a UN staff member in this recent escalation in violence. Ban Ki-moon describes this as a grievous setback for South Sudan and China's foreign ministry has called on those responsible to be brought to justice. We have already requested that the South Sudanese government investigate thoroughly into this incident and severely punish the culprits involved. The UN's Secretary General is demanding a rapid response from the UN's Security Council when they meet on Wednesday. He's calling on an arms embargo as well as sanctions to be placed on leaders as well as commanders deemed responsible for obstructing the peace deal in the country. He's also called on the United Nations Security Council to help reinforce and to fortify the UN mission in South Sudan. He's also calling them to help reinforce the 12,000 peacekeepers on the ground with attack helicopters. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon also says that the South Sudanese government is restricting movement for peacekeepers there as well. He does, however, say the UN mission is doing all it can in a volatile situation and calls on the Security Council to act and to help protect the human rights for people on the ground in South Sudan. William Denslow, CCTV, New York. Well, let's bring you an update now from the United Nations. Lorna Shaddock joins us live from New York. Uh, Lorna, of course, the United Nations Security Council was set to discuss South Sudan today. What's the latest then from the UN headquarters? That's right. The Security Council has been meeting to discuss this issue uh, and the meeting really had two parts. The first part was held in public and that was when uh, the UN Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping, Hervé Ladsou, uh, briefed uh, the members of the Security Council on the latest situation in Juba and uh, the rest of South Sudan. And indeed, the representative for South Sudan was also at that meeting. And uh, Mr. Ladsou said the situation is still fluid and uncertain. He said the ceasefire does appear to be holding, although he is concerned about the potential uh, for uh, the, the sporadic violence that is still taking place to spread throughout the country. He also uh, gave a few figures uh, in terms of the number of people displaced, saying uh, around 36,000 have been uh, displaced and 7,000 of those are taking shelter uh, within UN compounds. Uh, and he said that uh, at least 272 people uh, have been killed, of which at least 33 are civilians, but said that is likely to be only the tip of the iceberg and of course as we know that comes on top of the two UN peacekeepers who've already been killed uh, and uh, he really did press the case for concerted action by the Security Council saying we can less than ever afford to sit idle as the people of South Sudan yet again bear the brunt of the intransigence of their leaders so strong words from him the second part of the meeting is uh, closed door consultations between Mr Ladsu and the members of the Security Council and those have been going on here in New York today well, of course, those uh, strong words today are right on the back of uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's statement uh, yesterday. A lot of talking tough uh, regarding possible sanctions on South Sudan and its leaders, as well as an arms embargoes. Is it likely that uh, his suggestions or his proposals will be approved and implemented by the Council? Well, I think perhaps the first order of business for the Council, uh, as we heard a little bit earlier, is the renewal of the mandate of UNMIS, the UN uh, peacekeeping force within South Sudan, because its mandate expires on the 31st of July. And we know that Mr. Latu has been consulting with the member states who provide the police and the security personnel for UNMIS to see whether they might be uh, amenable to sending more troops and, and beefing up uh, the number of uh, peacekeeping personnel uh, in South Sudan as a result of this, this violence, as part of the renewed uh, mandate uh, of 
of UNMISS. So certainly the uh, members of the Security Council will want to know about that, uh, first of all, given uh, the short deadline involved, uh, particularly because UNMISS has already said as well that its capacity to protect, protect civilians if the violence does increase uh, is likely to be limited and it would need more personnel uh, if it is to properly protect civilians. Uh, but on top of that, as you say, Ban Ki-moon has certainly called on the Council to impose an, uh, in, an arms embargo. And we know that France, uh, Britain and uh, Angola, among others, back that. But uh, other veto-wielding powers, including uh, China and Russia, have been wary in the past. Uh, in particular, Russia, although uh, just recently its UN ambassador has said they could potentially be open to that option. But meanwhile, expanding sanctions is also, as you say, uh, another option that will be discussed in New York. And indeed, the leaders are looking at uh, targeted sanctions, they say, on leaders and commanders, as far as they see it, who are blocking the peace agreement that was, uh, that was made last August. Mm. I certainly hope those uh, targeted actions will uh, make the difference there in South Sudan. Thanks very much, Lorna Shaddock, live for us there in New York.